Let's go. One more week left, folks. One more week till we are done with this uh, distance learning uh, for the 2019-2020 uh, school year. Uh, pretty pumped up. Let's give that a double clap on three. One, two, three. <laughs> Gotta love it. Got to love it. All right, folks. Our final week is going to go over a couple more chemical reactions, and we are going to. Um, Observe what happens between uh, glow sticks, uh, some that are in a cold water and one that is in a uh, warm water. I got the water warming up right now, so we'll see that shortly, all right? But first, anchor phenomenon, glow sticks. How do glow sticks glow? By the end of this week, you are going to uh, write out a little sentence or so and explain to me how glow sticks glow by using our vocabulary, all right? So keep that in mind while we go through this um, entire week, all right? Day one, words of the week. Uh, they are the rate of reaction and then the three three of the different chemical reactions that occur. Uh, synthesis, uh, decomposition, and replacement reactions. Those are um, the words of the week for this week. What you should be able to learn this week are continuing on the chemical reaction um, theme. Substances react chemically in characteristic ways. In a chemical process, the atoms that make up the original substance are regrouped into different molecules, and the new substances have different properties from those reactants. So the products are different than the reactants, okay? So products right here are different than the reactants, okay? These are the reactants. Chemical synthesis reaction would be this example, and then um, they would be combined together. So they're different, okay? And the products over here, all right, have different chemical properties than the reactants, so the two different chemicals or elements or compounds over here, all right? Um, the total number of each type of atom is conserved, so the mass is not created and it's not destroyed. It's only transferred from one thing, uh, one object to another object. And some chemical reactions release energy, exothermic, while others uh, store or absorb energy, endothermic chemical reactions. The essential question for day two, all right, heat and rate of reaction. The essential question is, how does warming or cooling affect the rate of chemical reactions, all right? So you have to answer the prediction question right now, okay? You can do that, all right? What we're gonna do, here's your scenario. I have um, ice cold water right here. This is a glow stick that has yet to be popped or activated. And I have um, warm water right here. I'm gonna let the temperature of that take. And now, here's my, here's my warm water. All right, so your prediction question is, the temp is, what do you think will happen to glow sticks in the hot water? What do you think will happen to the glow stick in the cold water, okay? So the temperature for the cold water is 38.4 degrees. The temperature for the uh, warm water is increasing rapidly. Uh, this is increasing. And hopefully you can see that. But that is 163.8, 165 166.9. So you get the idea. This is very hot. And that is cold, all right? Uh, 212 degrees is boiling temperature, so it's not quite boiling. It wasn't boiling over there. And zero degrees is freezing, um, or 32 degrees is freezing, or zero degrees Celsius uh, is what I meant. And it's not quite completely freezing um, in this cup either, all right? So write your answer to the prediction question. What's going to happen to the rate of reaction in the glow stick for the warm water? And what's going to happen for the rate of reaction for the glow stick in the cold water, right? That's um, day two. Follow those instructions and complete that, uh, your observations on this data table right here. 
okay? So you're just going to do, um, it says hot, all right, before popping, what are your observations? So right now you could write down some observations, all right? And then after popping, I'll sh take another video, show you what's going to happen after popping, all right? And then in the cold, before popping and after popping, all right? So um, write down those observations for day two. Day three, learning task, uh, difference between hot and cold, um, conclusion, questions, and anchor phenomenon. I have an activity that you're going to submerge your hand in warm water. The warm water can be just um, warm tap water, all right? It doesn't have to be boiling or anything. And cold water, try to get your uh, hand in cold water. You're gonna do them at the same time. Then you're gonna go outside, do an activity. Um, it could be gardening, could be shooting hoops, it could be, um, you know, playing Baker's Band, I'm not sure what it is. Patty cake, patty cake, baker's man, there we go. All right, or do something with your hands, okay? And then you're gonna write down some observations on this data table, cold hand observations, warm hand observations, all right? And then you're gonna answer these conclusion questions, all right? This is task two, day three, the conclusion questions. If you take a look at number four, number four says, using the word bank, word bank explain what happens when you bend or pop a glow stick. This is an answer to your anchor phenomenon. How do glow sticks glow? Use these words in the word bank. We have done this several times. As you can see, still haven't erased my um, word bank from last time. How does popcorn pop? Um, so make sure that you are using that information. Make sure you're using those words to explain your answer to how does a glow stick glow. All right? That is it for um, week uh, the week of May 26th. I will see you guys next time, but this is a la final and last uh, lesson for you to watch during this week, all right? You've made it, congrats, let's finish strong, do an excellent job, and let me see what you know, um, what we, you have learned throughout this last, last six, seven weeks of how do glow six flow, all right? Thank you guys, see you later.